already introduced to you that uh, this course is basically discussing about some challenging cases in call nursing. And uh, I would be presenting my first case, which is rather the only case, uh, which we recently encountered. This was a case of rhizopus keratitis following a patient who had undergone, who had a river bath. And uh, this was something which was something new to us. Uh, she's a 13 year old female. She presented with complaints of pain, redness, watering, diminution of vision, right eye for one week duration. The only significant history was that she had gone, she had a proper river bath in Ganges prior to this event. And she was a non contact lens wearer, was receiving topical antibiotics prior to she came to us, and there was no other history of any other local trauma present. This was the picture with which she came to us. There was, uh, the right eye was involved. There was a diffuse infiltration of the cornea, as you can see. Uh, very severe photophobia. It was very, it was a challenge to take these pictures. Where the, if you look at it, it's the superficial layers of the cornea which were involved. And nearly about eight to nine millimeters of the cornea uh, had infiltration. First look, when I thought it looked like as if there's infiltrates, could we have this switched off? Uh, uh, in, I, I thought first impression that it's in this wreath-like uh, configuration. Pain definitely was far more, and it was as so a NTA chamber somehow was quiet. And there was no hypopion, and uh, I thought whether whether we are dealing with acanthamoeba and a rare thought maybe whether it's locardia. That was the first thing which I thought of. I did the scrapings and we did not get anything significant in the scraping. It was reported uh, to be not showing any particular organism. Uh, we did about scraping three to four times and only in one scraping they thought that uh, there was a canthamoeba which was seen that they weren't very sure of but they thought they were the, I'll be showing you the pictures of that. Uh, the patient was put on anti acanthamoeba drugs uh, with multiple scrapings being done every day and ultimately as you can see that the disease progressed and it became like a dense infiltrate involving the center part of the, I mean whole of the 9 millimeter of the cornea and uh, when patient was meanwhile on antibacterials and uh, anti acanthamoeba drug no antifungal was given to this patient. We never got any hyphae in the direct smear. By this time, nearly 10 days had passed. Once the patient did not improve, we took up the patient for a therapeutic keratoplasty. This I am trying to show that one of the slides which was shown scraping initially, it showed these kind of structures which were interpreted to be having like acanthamoeba cysts and they were present multiple inflammatory cells. And based on this, patient did get, uh, and of course we did multiple scraping, I mean four times the uh, scraping cultures were grown, it, it showed nothing. Uh, patient was controlled in PHM, was put on PHM, bupropamidine and oral intraconazole. Since there was no improvement, she underwent therapeutic endoplasty. This was the post-op, three weeks post-op of the same patient, showing, um, you can see I put a nine millimeter graft, and since the anterior chamber was quiet, the anterior chamber was not much affected, the anterior segment is reasonably alright. And uh, she was doing well and we had meanwhile sent the corneal button for histopathology also. To a surprise, the pathologist could pick up, there were branching aseptic hyphae which were stained on HLE stain and they said that it was suggestive of zygomycetes fungal infection, most probably either a rhizopus or muca. And this is the picture which we got from them. This is just to show you the HLE stain. And the hallmark of the disease, as was pointed out to me by pathologists, was that there was a lot of necrosis, but hardly any inflammatory cells, which further got to show that we were dealing with fungal keratitis. And on a routine HLE stain, these were the branching, uh, filaments which could be picked up. These were these uh, particular moles and the, another highlight was the ball of these hyphae. The balls as you can see were not straight, they were buckling and these were aseptate hyphae 
multiple. According to them, these were all multiple, multiple uh, hyphae. This is again an obtuse angle. Multiple hyphae which were seen, and plus there may not be any nucleus because they are usually mononucleate, aseptate hyphae. And uh, he said that he was very used to seeing all this in brain tissues. So there was no doubt that if we were dealing with something like mucus. Now there are four things which are clubbed under mucus. He did a pass tail for that, and you can see those multiple rods, transparent multiple rods uh, in this tissue, where the no nucleus. That's the reason he said that as the nucleus is maybe single, they're mononucleated. And once, if you really take a scraping from them, because I was surprised at well, how come I was not seeing anything in the scrapings earlier, and how come in the culture nothing grew? This it was very difficult to grow the culture because if you're not very careful with the tissue, you mince the tissue, and since there is no nucleus, so you may not grow anything. So it was on histopathology; it was documented that we were dealing with a case of um, rhizopus. In the present time, rhizopus and mucus are basically placed in the same group of uh, fungi. Uh, initially, they say you should diagnose typically rhizopus only till you see the rhizoids in the uh, specimens. Uh, further, course the same clear graft which I showed you went into graft failure over 12 weeks post-op. Patient developed total keratotic and secondary glaucoma. I did the regraft further on the. I waited for the graft to become completely opaque. Did a regraft for opaque graft with total cataract. And since I knew by now that the initial disease was uh, mucor, we covered him with oral and topical boriconazole. And this is the present uh, picture um, of the same patient. And I waited for the graft to completely opacify and then took up the did a patient for graft and did an IOL with it. Took a, on purpose a very small graft and uh, um, I think she had a pressure that now going out of control. She's waiting for the tube now in the side. Uh, I, for, I reviewed the case with pathologist and the microbiologist because I was getting repeated negative cultures, no fungal hyphae. Then <laughs> another thing which came to me when the pathologist was saying, he said whatever was reported to us, a cathemiva were probably RBCs. So you've got to be very, very sure what we are dealing with. And then I did a little review of the mucor keratitis and it's basically not commonly encountered in the ophthalmology practice. They are only seen in rhinocerebral extraocular infections and again on immunocompromised patients or patient may be diabetic. Our patient had none of these kind of things. Very few cases of rhizopus keratitis are known. Uh, one being uh, reported by Schwarzer in 78 in a, when they were a, a soil injury and a, a soil contaminated screwdriver had hit. Another patient who had a hit with a trauma uh, with a metallic wire. Another patient who had a poor contact lens hygiene. And recently in Canadian General they have reported a similar thing in a cocaine abuser. So why, uh, although gram stain are, are, was negative for fungi, they are least sensitive for fungal keratitis, primarily diagnosed with histopathology. And this is, I can say, the first case of rhizopus keratitis after a bath in the river. So just one has to be open to all these uh, entities and you are really taken by surprise when these things come up. And the last slide, I just have one more slide to show. And uh, the treatment of choice has been reported to be either M4B or Voriconazole. That's what I wanted to put. Thank you very much. Thank you.